Ah. Just burned my hand on the coffee pot. That was nice. I, I'm so numb at this point. My hand was on the, uh, as it was touching the side of the coffee pot for like, I don't know, a half hour before I even realized uh, pain. Now, before the neurotransmitters kicked on. Said, all right. Uh, this is the hand. Uh, yeah. Uh, and we get a pathway through the spine. Like, uh, I don't know, guys. There's a lot of fat in here. A lot of alcohol going on. Uh, let me, we'll have to clear the way. This is the spine to the brain. What's going on up there, guys? Huh? Guys, yeah, I don't, this is the brain. What's, what's the story? Yeah, the hands, uh, it's touching the coffee pot. It's hot as fuck. You gotta yank it away quick. All right, let me, uh, let me flip on the neurotransmitters. Hold on. Hey, guys. Guys, wake up. Come on. But they're all sleeping in cots. Oh, yeah. My brain, my brain is like the allied, uh, the Long Island Railroad workers. I love this. My friend used to work for the Long Island Railroad. He says, you walk into a locker room. And he, the first day he went there, he walked in the locker room. He turned on the lights. Everybody was like, oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? He looks around. There's cots everywhere. Everybody was sleeping on the job. How come I can't get this fucking job? Oh my god, I'd be like, oh sorry, ding. I mean, lullaby and good night. Do 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 do. I'm right with you guys. Where, hey, where's my cot? Oh my god. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what kind of scene this is? I, I love it. They keep on hiking the rates at the Long Island Railroad. Oh, people are going out of their minds every month. It's a new rake height, hike, hike rate, rate hike, rake height. What? What? What am I fucking retarded? Rate hike. I just. I mean, it's Alzheimer's. It's dementia. You name it. It's all kicking in, baby. And then my eye, my eyes about to slam out of my head. So there's another thing. I think I'm, I'm just going to wait for Halloween day and, and then shoot my eyeball out at the camera. Anyhow. Yeah, guys, uh, neurotransmitters. All right, flip the switch. You got to move that hand. Come on, this guy's on fire. This guy, it's us. It's us. They're like, ah, fuck him. Go back to sleep, guys. That's it, now I got a burnt hand. That's wonderful. Guys, the cupboards are bare. I'm telling you right now. You don't have anywhere else to be right now. Something to do, I don't know. You, why don't you go rearrange your sock drawer? How about that? Get something done with your life. Oh boy. I go to a barbecue the other night, okay? It's hot now. I got news for you right now. They said to me, I'm so fed up with my drink. All right, all I want is a Jack and Coke. All right, I'm fiending for a Jack and Coke, but I won't drink it. And Jack and Ginger Ale, it just doesn't do it for me anymore. I tell you what, it was a hot summer night. I said, I'm sitting in my chair there. The girl says to me, my sister-in-law, she's like, you want a drink? I'm like, you got some gin in there? I'm like an 85 year old woman now. We're playing bridge, do you have any gin? Yeah. I see, you got, you got gin and tonic? Give me a fucking gin and tonic, will ya? She makes me a gin and tonic? Got the lime in there, the whole shit? Let me tell you something right now. What a beautiful drink a gin and tonic is on a summer night. Oh, forget about it. Poolside. Yeah. You have, I, it came in like this tall glass too. You have three of these and it's like the fucking, uh, the Billy Joel song. So you, they found your father in the swimming pool. 
Ah, oh, looks like you won't be going back to school anymore. Uh, what a fucking depressing song. Oh, this is a depressing show. Guys, what do you want me to tell you? I'm dropping these, these gin and tonic bombs. Do you understand? I had three of them and I was out of my mind. Then they pass around tequila shots. And then I'm out of my mind. And then who comes walking in? The neighbors. The neighbors come over. I'm like, wow, you guys have an actual, I don't know, like neighborhood? This is an actual community? If my neighbor came to the, to, to, uh, if I was having a barbecue and my neighbor came to the, to the fence, I'd be like, honey, get me my AR-15 out of their basement. I mean, what, you, what what's the problem now? What's the problem? I was like, wow, they actually have like this, this, uh, I don't know. Uh, he got, a guy shows up with a cake, a bottle of Patron. I'm like, wow, these are great neighbors. Fuck. Oh, yeah. They're not growing uh, uh, bushes that knock over my fence? That's it? Or this guy over here is, is ha hacking up his lung every morning for, for the whole neighborhood to hear? Oh, I love it. 300 pound guy st s holding onto a railing, smoking cigarettes. 300 pounds, I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. Hacking. We hear this for a half an hour every morning. I gotta record it. My wife is throwing, my, my wife is literally gag gagging while we're eating breakfast. I got the egg on my fork like this and I hear, I'm like, when is this motherfucker gonna die? Go die somewhere. Already. It's amazing what the human body can take. So the neighbors come over. This guy's like from, he's a Salvadorian, right? But he's like, in, he's like in, in like really good shape. I'm like, what's going on here? The guy sits down and we start talking. I find out this guy was in the Salvadorian Special Forces. Listen, I, I got if I, I got to put up with my, my brother-in-law who was in, in uh, he's from Israel. Okay, he's a Jewish guy. Let me tell you something about people from Israel. Every five seconds, I got to bang you over the head about how they were in the military. It's it's mandatory service in in Israel. I don't know if you know this or not. So, you know, every five seconds, you know, I was in the Air Force, and this is not the other thing. We used to fly fighter jets. I, I know. You were probably mopping the tarmac with, uh, I, I don't know, with the hot mop. Or I, I love how everybody in the Air Force was in Top Gun. I got this I got this guy at work, all right? He's about, I don't know, a contair under 400 pounds. And he's telling me how we used to fly fighter jets in Top Gun. I said, no, sorry, sorry, no. No, sorry, I don't buy it. I said, number one, you don't have the right stuff body. Do you understand? You're not going to meet an ex-fighter pilot who's like 400 pounds. That just doesn't happen. There's a certain discipline ingrained in a fighter pilot. I, my, listen, if you invite a fighter pilot over to, to a party, number one, he shows up on a, like a, a 3,000cc uh, Ducati. I don't know. Or a Jixer, this type of thing. That's right, he can't get over the fact that he was a fighter jet pilot. He needs speed everywhere he goes. They're like, okay, you're gonna be in charge of the grill tonight and he's already doing like the Blue Angels, like they practice. He's like, with the f flip the burger, all right, open the grill like this, open 45 degrees, turn on knobs. You know how Blue Angels, they, they, they sit in a room like this. <sighs> <sighs> they, they're not, they don't turn into undisciplined slobs. It's programmed. It's in the neuro network, the subconscious mind. Everything they do is fight a pilot precision. So go eat another sleeve of Oreos and get out of my face. That's what I feel like saying to people. I don't buy it. People still bullshit these days, if you can imagine. 
there are major league bullshitters out there. And then he shows me a, like a picture of a helmet. Like, see, see, I have the helmet. It's like, that's great. That's great. You should have a, a, a hockey helmet on. Anyhow. Every day, he's in, I, I, I was in the Israeli army. I was in the Israeli army. Okay. All right. I know. We all know. So what does he do? He's got a bird, a mockingbird on the property. And he hates it. It makes too much noise. It's it's doing this. It's doing that. Tweet this. Tweet that. So he he gets a slingshot, and now his mission is he's gonna he's gonna kill this bird. Anyhow, he goes to shoot the bird, and it and the the rock ricochets off the house and breaks the window on his brand new Audi. You can't make this shit up. You can't make this shit up. It's a, a, the, uh, you can't make it up. So first thing I do when I go to the barbecue, I hear this like, you know, because my wife's always bickering on the phone with her sister. So I catch wind of this and I'm laughing to myself. So when I go to the barbecue, first thing I say is, hey, David, where did you, you learn how to work a slingshot in the Jewish Air Force? I know, I know, I know. I know. Anyway, this guy, this guy's telling me about how he's in the, uh, the El Salvadorian uh, Special Forces. He, they, uh, the Jewish guy's telling me, he was in the Special Forces in El Salvador. And I go into like, I don't know how to explain it. I go into a montage in my head. I'm like, oh my God. Listen, when you tell me you're in, in the special forces of like, I don't know, Croatia. Like, remember Crow Cop? Remember the guy that that used to UFC fight and he would kick everybody in the head? Yeah, this was like most brutal, brutal knockouts you'll ever see in a UFC ring. Remember, all, the only thing you wanted to do was kick people in the head? And they were like, well, he, you know, he was in the Croatian Special Forces. And all I can think to myself is, how many heads did he cut off? Like, how many decapitations is he responsible for? Yeah. That's all. He, they told me, so El Salvadorian Special Forces. I'm like, how many people did this guy, like, I don't know, splay in gut with a survival knife? Yeah. that Special Forces in other countries is different than Special Forces here in America. Okay? Yeah. You, you don't get to be special forces in El Salvador unless you, I don't know, unless you're handing out Colombian neckties. This type of thing. So now I'm like paranoid around this guy. I'm like, I, you know what? I can't deal with it anymore. Then I, I, I have the vicious, most vicious hang... The next day we'll go into a lake upstate. Do you understand? And I have the most brutal hangover you've ever had in your life. I was drinking gin and tonics that shifted to uh, a tequila... And then we we went up into overdrive and started drinking, I don't know, it was this 25-year-old whiskey. It was delicious at that point. I was like, this this whiskey is delicious. Uh, but I was saying that in my head, but out of my mouth was, I Because I could tell look, when you're really drunk, I'm still aware at my most drunkest point, believe it or not, I've never been like, ah, I, I go into a time warp. I don't do that. I wish I could. I wish I could forget about what happened that, that night. Like the next day, wake up, what happened? I am completely cognizant. I could just keep on pouring it in. And unless I die, I remember everything. Thank you. Thank you. That's my skill in life. Remembering while I'm drunk. Fantastic abilities you gave me. What am I, a, an X-Man? And I know I'm really drunk because I'll be talking to somebody and I see the eyes. 
Like in my head, prop addiction is coming out. But then I'll look at somebody and they're like, and I know, I say, oh my God, what I'm saying is just coming out like, and then I know when I join a conversation, nobody will look at me. I said, oh my God, I'm too drunk. That's when I do the Irish goodbye and I walk home. That's all. Very cognizant. Isn't that great? Uh, um, um, um. So uh, we go home. I, I, I do the, uh, I don't know how to tell you, the Ric Flair flop into bed fully clothed. That's my other thing. <laughs> it's front shoulder first into bed like this with the clothes on. That's all. It's one of those things where the wife has to come in and take your shoes off. That's how you know you're really drunk. I know. And then, uh, what seemed like uh, three minutes later, I'm being w w aw awoken by my wife. We gotta go to the lake. And I'm like, oh, we're going to the lake? <laughs> you could see the noodles of my brains coming out of my ears. I said, great. Great, we're going to the lake. I can't wait. We're going to the fucking lake. Oh, we gotta, I, we gotta pack. I gotta get, I gotta pull the, the beach chairs out from under the crawl space. Every time I come home from the beach, I gotta pack everything back under the crawl space. So I'm bent over and I'm pulling the beach chairs out and I just wishing for death. I can feel my brain swelling from the hangover. You know how when you, I got news to you, in regular life, bending over to me is like, I don't know, it's the Challenger crash. It's, it's on the same level as the Challenger crashing. It's that much of a tragedy. I hate bending over. My hamstrings don't let me bend. I arch my back. It's back pain. It's shortness of breath. I mean, it's like, why do... It's, it's a horror, it's a horror film. And then you stand up again and you're like, oh, I hope that never happens again. And then you have to go back down. Anyhow. I'm like, do, do some people live like a normal life where they can like bend over and get back up again? I don't know. I don't fucking know. So I'm getting all the chairs out. I get the umbrella out. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta hurl the, the, uh, the hundred pound cooler out to the roadside. We're getting picked up. Do you understand? This is my only saving grace. We're getting picked up in a van. We all pile into the van, and then what comes on? They got two huge JBL speakers. I'm like, we're going to a picnic. We're going to a picnic. And you guys have the sound system from Webster Hall. I don't, but you don't understand. We're enclosed in a van and then the music comes on. And now it's like, guys, it's seven o'clock in the morning. Okay, this is how I know I'm getting old. And you start cranking up the music. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. If I, if the, I, I, I wanted to jump through the window. That's all. But I wanted to jump through the window in such a way that I do like a curling swan dive right under the rear tire as it runs me over. I was like, is that even humanly possible? But here's the thing. The family's so nice. You understand? They understand I'm the only white guy that can speak English in the whole entire vehicle. So the guy de doing the DJ work here, he's number one, he's already got the, uh, the Johnny Walker open. Yeah. He's like, oh, we'll play you, we'll play you a song, we'll play you a song. And they start playing the Beatles. I'm like, oh, Christ. <sighs> Don't let me down. Don't let me down. So now before we were listening to like, it was merengue off the hook. It was like, ding, 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 
I mean, it was like the most high energy music. Everybody's like into it. They're shaking around, shaking around. And they're like, hey, let's play a song for Whitey. And they turn it on and it's, don't let me down. And I'm like, ah. And they're all looking at me like, this is your music? And I'm like, ah. They're like, you like the Beatles? And I, I, how do you say no to that? No, I, I don't like the Beatles. That Let me sit there and lie to you. I say, yeah, uh, uh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You know? Mm-hmm. And now the, the whole party's ruined because they're playing the Beatles. And I'm like, ha, 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 thanks for thanks for that one. Thanks for playing my request that I didn't request. And they say, all right. Then, then they play some more music. Then the party goes back up and everybody's back into it again. And then they're like, oh, we'll play you another one. And they start playing S Sweet Child of Mine. Oh, guys, guys. I can't listen to Guns N' Roses anymore. I can't do it. We have a radio station over here that can't stop playing Guns N' Roses. Paradise City, welcome to the jungle. Uh, Mr. Brownstone. Ah, uh, sweet child of mine. I can't stand Guns N' Roses anymore. I used to kind of like them. I hate them now. They're playing... I'm sitting there with a hangover and it's... And I'm like... And they're all... And then they all look at you. Is he happy that that's on? And I'm like... I'm dying inside. I'm dying. And then somebody says in the back, you like Billy Joel? I'm like, ha, 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 ha. I swear they said that. I'm like, yeah, Billy Joel's okay. I like Billy Joel. I like the piano man. I like the piano man because it's been beaten into my subconscious mind by K-Rock. Anyhow, guys, what do you want me to tell you? We arrive... Number one, the, the van is packed to the gills. We had a Weber barbecue, a full-size Weber barbecue in the van. My son, uh, my son is sleeping like on my lap the whole time. It's 3000 degrees. He's on my lap the whole time. I don't have an ass. Do you understand? I was basically, this was a Dodge van. I had the bead. You know how you know how the interior seat, the back seat has this bead around it that they like to sew on to torture you to death? It's like a, a bead of leather. I don't know what is vinyl piping that goes around the seat. That bead was imprinted into my sciatic nerve. And I have my son on top of me. That's right, another 50 pounds on top of how much I weigh. Going right into my sciatic nerve and we're going over bumps in this van and I'm like, oh my God, this is like, the Taliban could not invent a better torture. Then I go to get up and I was like Vince McMahon running into the wrestling ring. You know how he blows out both of his quadricep muscles? He like ripped them both off the bone running into the ring because he was sitting at the TV state, like in the TV table for eight hours editing or whatever they fucking do. And then he made a break to run into the ring and he snapped both quadriceps. That's how it felt like when I jumped out of the van. I said, what am I doing? I almost snapped. I almost ripped both patella tendons off the bone jumping out of the van. Yeah, because I'm 23. You didn't know? Anyhow, we get to this place. I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to give you the abbreviated version. We went to this lake. Number one, not a white person to be seen. I don't have a problem with that. But I can tell you right now, if they dropped a bomb on this place, there wouldn't be one Puerto Rican left in New York City. You have no idea. Oh. I've never been surrounded by so many Puerto Ricans in my life. I have news for you right now. To me, Puerto Ricans are the scariest of all the Latinos. Or Latinas. Okay? I grew up with Puerto Rican kids. Alright? I was friends with Puerto Rican kids. I get it. They would throw rocks at cars that go by. 
Do you understand? I Listen, Puerto Rican people, I love you to death. You guys are in fucking sane. I'm here to tell you. I, I, I'm here to tell you. I saw, I saw these Puerto Rican kids do things like you have no idea. You'd be riding by in your bike and they would throw like, I don't know, uh, a brick at you. This type of thing. And their sister was so hot. Oh my God. Oh my God. I remember popping little boners when I would see their sister. Oh my God. Puerto Rican chicks. Ishka more marimenke. Yeah, they're smoking. Smoking hot. I don't know where Puerto Rican girls get such a narrow waist from and such a huge ass. They're, they're right on par with Brazilians. This is ridiculous right now. I know J-Lo. <laughs> J-Lo. I'm sick and tired of J-Lo. All right, can you get ugly already? Seriously. When's she going to hit the wall? I'm waiting for it. It needs to happen. We get it. We get it. You're smoking hot and you're 53. We get it. We get it. Enough already. I got to hear everybody. Oh, J-Lo looks so good. Yeah, no kidding. J I got news for you, J-Lo. Uh, I'll take you to the, the supermarket in Copeg. And I'll show you chicks that are way hotter than you, all right? Because they're like, I don't know, 21? Enough with your 53-year-old, uh, you know, great ass. What do you want me to tell you? Anyhow, I remember going to the Bronx Zoo. Remember? And, and it was like, next thing you know, there'd be like the, the, the... Remember how you there would be kids from different schools when you would go? Like, we all walked in line. Like, there was like some discipline. And then you'd see the, 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 the class of, uh, I don't know, Puerto Rican kids coming. There's one get, one kid's taking a piss over here. They're, throw, we, they're throwing cobblestones at the gorillas. Even the gorillas were like, oh shit, the fucking Puerto Rican kids are here. Let's get out of here. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. They, they, they were beating the gorillas with sticks. I fucking, I, I, I tell you. The place was loaded with Puerto Rican people. I'm like, all right, I'm on guard now. I'm telling you right now, listen, I'm the only white guy there. They're looking at me like, I don't know, Donald Trump arrived. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And the smell of pot smoke, I'm like, what are we at, Woodstock? What's going on here? Now that pot is basically legal in New York, I'm like, I got to start smoking pot. That's all I got to tell you. Guys, I don't know what to tell you. We went to the fucking lake. I went swimming. I mean, there were thousands of people in this lake. I'm like, I'm swimming in, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how good nature's uh, 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 filter is, but it's it's safe to say this is a 50% ratio of piss in this water at this point. This is bacterial. There's a bacterial bloom going on. I don't know how to explain it to you. Anyhow. Uh... Guys, Callahan here. I mean, we were in like. Yeah, it's a half an hour. Callahan. for duty. Oh. Oh. Yes. Uh, um. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And just like that. Rita falls and scanner comes back on. for crimes.
I, I'm trying to be patient. You know, this is a new scanner. I'm trying to be patient here. Oh, oh, all, all right. I got a beautiful tree in my front yard. It's it's my proudest tree up piece of I don't know vegetation in the yard. I planted it myself. I I tore my back out chopping out the old tree. We had a tree in the front yard. I chopped it out. I mean, I ruined my back doing it. I I I, I don't know what I did. I herniated a disc swinging an axe. I don't know what to tell you. Pulled that tree out of the ground and we went and bought this little tree. So this little tr I like buying plants that are small. You understand? If I had it my way, I'd have a mound of dirt and I'd put a seed in. To me, that's what it's all about. And watching it grow. And that way, you know, you know, 40 years from now, when I'm shitting my pants in a wheelchair and my my you know, my my son's wife comes over with his kids, I'm like, I planted that tree from a seed. And they're all like, when is this motherfucker going to die already? And I'm like, you don't understand. Back in 2008. Uh, and they're like, oh, all right, push his wheelchair into traffic. So I, I like planting things from nothing. It's just my wife, if, if we want shrubs around the house, she wants to buy full blown shrubs. Yeah, $500 a clip. No, no, I buy a bag of seeds and watch them grow. It's, anyhow, we bought this little sapling of a tree from Home Depot. I forgot what it cost at the time. 25 bucks, tops. This is, I don't even know what the name of the fucking tree is. We planted this tree. It wound up turning into the most beautiful tree in the front yard. It has it has these cascading branches that come down like a weeping willow. All the way down, just before it touches the ground, they stop. I'm like, how do they know to stop? How come they don't just keep on growing and grow onto the ground and flow all over the place? It's like the trees, the tree knows. There's a programming in there. It's like you can do certain things and you can't do certain things. Amazing nature. Nature. And the branches are like fractal the way they grow. They like Y out and they Y out and they Y. It's, it's incredible. If you look at the tree, it's like unbelievable. It looks like a big, like, uh, what is that? Geosaic dome? No. No. That's not how you say it. <sighs> Anyhow. My wife's like, you got to trim it. I said, leave the fucking tree alone. Anytime she goes to like trim a manicure or something, I, I don't know. She destroys it. And if you look at people with the same style tree, they cut it. They cut it flat, almost like a, I don't know how to explain it. Like it's bonsai or something. I'm like, leave this tree alone. It couldn't be healthier. She has the, the landscaper come over. And trim the tree. I came home from work. I got to show you pictures of the tree. It destroyed my day. I got out of the car. I said. It, it looked like somebody dropped the A-bomb on my tree. I walked in. I said, I don't even want to know what you did to the fucking tree. He cut branches on the top. Huge branches on the top. He sawed them off. I'm like, why? The tree looks horrible. The tree looks like it has tree cancer at this point. Like stage five. Two weeks to live. I'm like, it's going to take five to ten years to come out from under this. To go back to normal where it was before. Five to ten years. Minimum. I was so aggravated. I said, don't, don't I, I'm going to take that landscaper. Yeah. He lives in Amityville with columns. He's the only house in Amityville that's got columns like the White House. That's right. I paid for those columns. I want to go to his house and I want, I want to prune his columns. I'll wrap a chain around all four columns. I'll tie it to the back of my, my Mazda. And rip the whole facade of his house off. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I did a little pruning. What's the problem? 
uh, 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 guys, guys. All right. Are you done? I'm done. Are you done? I don't know what to do. We got this, this fucking slot machine. It's like a hemorrhoid now. I don't know what to, I, I can't get rid of it. I don't know where to put it. This is my, I don't know. This is a mechanical hemorrhoid that I have now. I have absolutely no space for it. Guys, we got we got packages here. We need a little help from Johnny Blade. I'm not gonna lie to you. Here's one coming from I don't know because they put a sticker right over where where it's coming from. It's but it says it had one that Amazon. What is this? Oh shit. Oh shit. Is there a note? This is awesome, by the way. This is awesome. What a thoughtful thing. Hey Jesse, love the show. I thought this would be a great addition to the emulation PC. Keep up the great work. All the best. Rich in the UK. P.S. I'm not the rich who sent the PC. From Richard. Oh, from Richard and he has his last name here. Uh, wow, that, that was really thoughtful of you, Rich. Really thoughtful. You know, we have this new uh, PC emulation machine that everybody keeps on asking me about. Like, I know what the fuck it is. They're like, hey, could you tell me the inner workings of that PC emulation? I was like, no. I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. To me, it's a magic box. I'm a moron. Okay, this thing might as well have, uh, I don't know, landed by UFO. All I know is I plug it in. The guy Rich that designed this for me, what I, I don't even know if he designed it for me, but maybe that's just the way he makes it. I'm so grateful to him that I was able to plug it in, press the button, and we can play Saturn games, just like that. If there was any type of code I had to enter or any type of programming I had to do, I would have just been sitting like, like this, like the gorillas on the monolith in 2001. So I'm so grateful that he made it for a moron, a complete moron. And what a really, really nice, thoughtful thing to do. I mean, this is, this, you gotta understand something about this audience that, that we have here, the viewers here. They are uh, the most incredible. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't give a shit about your actual popular YouTube channels. It's it's all all it's all garbage and trash out there. This is the real deal. This is the real deal. Thank you, Rich. So cool. Look at this. USB Sega Saturn controller. I love the Sega Saturn controller. Always have. Always have. It's a great controller. The, l listen, this this right here, this is like, I don't know, 32-bit gave us great controllers. The PlayStation controller, the Saturn, Saturn controller, come on, come on. We will use that today. Here we go, another one. This is great, you know. This is this is Royal Mail. That's right. Where's it coming from? I don't, they never tell you. They never tell you. It's just Royal Mail. So you know, we, it's coming from the UK, right? That's right. We got the Queen on there. You know something, the UK, let me tell you something, one of the treasures of the UK are the Sex Pistols, all right? You got to understand something right now. I, I watch, listen, I like watching, uh, what's his name? Johnny Rotten, you know what I mean? And uh, just as he's boisterous and uh, annoying. 
<laughs> let's face it. Listen, listen, let's face it. He likes to piss people off. Let's face it. But you know what? What he did with the Sex Pistols at that time in the UK, fucking incredible. Incredible stuff. It really is. And the song Bodies, the b Bodies by the Sex Pistols. Yeah. Bodies. I'm not an animal. Bodies. I'm not a bloody fucking mess. <laughs> How's it go? Oh my god. Yeah. Body, Sex Pistols. It's one of the greatest songs of all time. Ah. Uh, you know, lovely, lovely penmanship. Right? Smashing. Uh, dear Jesse, thanks for all the hours of entertainment you give us. Enclosed is the item we were discussing on Patreon. Okay. This is, in uh, my humble opinion, the best. That, that. From Mark. From Mark. Yes. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yes, Mark. Yes, it is. Oh, this is this is pretty neat. It's the Core Graphics Mini. Wow, I never saw this thing. The box, at least. Jesus Christ. Wow, brand spanking new. Look at this thing. Oh yeah. How how does this differ from the from the Turbo Graphics Mini? I don't know. I really don't know. But look at that. It has all the games displayed on the, on the back there. Fantastic. You know what? This, this is so appropriate right now because I said to myself when doing this show, and, and thank you, Rich, and thank you, Mark. Wow, that's, that's a nice thing for the, uh, for the old game shelf, right? It is. It is. Let's not lie. That's pretty neat. I love the look of the core graphics. I think I think if you want a chip, if you want the chip version of PC Engine, if you just want to play the chip games, and I get it, some guys are entry level, they don't want to spend all the money on the CD games. If you want entry level, the core graphics is an amazing way to get in, right? Because it's it's like the PC Engine, but it's got the AV outs on it, right? P P white PC Engine has uh, RF outs. We get it. It's a drag. Core graphics, a beautifully working system, small, compact, doesn't take up a lot of room on your game shelf, and you pop in those chip games and you listen to that wonderful chip music. Ah, oh. it's great. So I came out here today and I said I want to do a breakaway thing with the uh, with the with Rich's uh, emulation machine, and it's something that we haven't done in a while. We haven't played any games in a while. I know. I'm like, what what kind of show are we running here? And I said, I'd like to come out and play some Turbo CD games. Just scroll through, have a little fun. So isn't it interesting that we get a controller to do that and this to kind of remind us of that. It's, guys, the show is ordained by Jesus Christ himself. It's At this point, it's just ordained. I, I don't know what to tell you. So why don't we get right into it right now and do some turbo PC Engine CD stuff. Just on the fly. Let's have a little fun with it, shall we? Picture picture time!
woods a little swollen from the humidity. Uh, uh, all, right, all right, let me get a controller. Tap into the Edison line, pipe through the Sansui 1010, and charging atomic batteries, kill the lights of attrition, and move you into prime time position. That's right. Guys, I know. I know what you're thinking. You're right. The screen is dusty. I'm not going to play turbo graphics games on a dusty screen, I'll tell you that right now. That's right. Okay, oh boy. I don't know how we have this thing configured. Oh! Okay, here we go. So, boy, look at our options here, guys. Unbelievable. Let's just see what, what drums up something that makes sense at the moment oh let's play the original fighting street yes yes guys before street fighter 2 we had fighting street one of the very first games that i bought being cheap out of the gate one of the first very first games i bought uh 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 oh no no okay how do you start Start. Hey, ah. Uh, yes, okay. A good game? Not really, but an important game. Here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. Come on, guys. 1989. Hudson Soft put this together in 89. Okay, here we go. We gotta get this volume out of here. What are we gonna do? We're gonna go to Japan? Hey, we, since we got stuff from the UK today, we go to the UK. Thank you! There you go. Look at this hooligan. Uh, all you had to do is know how to do a Hadouken, and you 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 kill the game. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh yeah, baby. Come on. That was the world's. Wow, Jesus. Birdie's good. Wow, without the load times, can you imagine? Hold on, let's get me in frame here. Okay. Come on, come on, come on. That's right. Take that bitch out of here! World's first Hadouken! You're out of here! Alright, how do we get out of this? <laughs> I don't know. Oh boy! Uh All my buttons are full. Hold on a second. Let's go to Final Zone 2. I love this game. I don't know how to explain it to you. I love it. It's a It's a pick up and play. I know. Renovation in the house. Guys, look at this. Oh, yeah, it's the space station. I'm not skipping the the uh, the cutscenes. I'm sorry. They're too good. Let's Our go. mission is to put down the rebel army which has captured the scientific weapon Walkure. In five minutes, we will be passing over our dropping point. Get ready for descent. Top, call off your mission. Bowie, the Zod! 
Hansen. <laughs> what happened? A high voltage energy wave is approaching us. An EMT. Oh, an EMP. I got I got a guy at work that talks about EMPs. I'm like, get away from me. Oh, look at this. Oh, you didn't know in space lasers sound like bombs. Guys, are you ready for some... Look at this. Never before seen in video games. Oh! The devastation. Ouch! Alright, we don't have time. I mean, we do, but here's the lone survivor. Wow, what a way to make an entrance. In the final zone operation, someone's trying to get you. Me? Who? Who knows? But guys, you want to talk about music? I'm Let's get started here. We don't all right, we don't have time. Yes, I know. This is some of the best cutscenes you're ever gonna see, guys, but we don't have time. Let's go. people singing in a video game this was like what is going on here I kind of didn't like it back then all right here we go come on Bowie let's do let's we gotta crank it up guys oh yeah listen to that music all right we got machine gun here Guys, it's Commando. Very nice play control. Very responsive. You shoot off your center line, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. I think you could strafe, too. Can't you strafe? Listen to that bass. Right, take that bitch. Take that bitch. Take that bitch, come on. Out of here, bitch. Patience, right? Patience is what you need. Out of here. Get the bazooka guys out of here. Guys, we're storming the beach, do you understand? Oh, it just feels so good. Flank him. Oh, you're out of here, bitch. Out of here, bitch. Out of here. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here's the boss, man. And take that. Out of here, bitch! Come on! Some. That's it, you're out of here. Out of here. Oh, shit. Listen to the three music changes already. Oh, it's the same song? All right. Oh, boy. 
boy. Oh boy. Oh, it's mayhem. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. Jesus Christ. Where are you going to start us? All right, guys, guys. You understand? We're like three hours in here. Ay, 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 an hour and a half. Guys, just to get, just, just to, just to wet our lips with the TurboGrafx CD, there's so much on the horizon, so much. Guys, do you realize you just tuned into the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With a 4K face! We'll see you next time. Okay, everybody. I don't know if you realize this or not. We have a bombastic show on Patreon. I believe we're up to 22 episodes at this point. It might be more than that. We have a wonderful program where we give people advices. Do you understand? You email me down below. That's simple. Shoot me an email. Ask me a question. I answer your question from the heart. Honesty here. That's right. And we give you wonderful advices just like this. Then I come home. I have a protein shake. And I'm going to wash it down with a couple Heinekens. Yeah. I mean, I should have a belt with a roll of toilet paper connected to it. Number one, friends, I, I got news for you. Friends are an optical illusion. Oh yeah, uh, you don't know that? It's a big ruse. At, I had a crater of, I don't know what, the, a blood crater. I was throwing up. I threw up, then she threw up. Then we both threw up together. And then I said, okay, I'll be seeing you. Good night. Sex is over. I, I won't be expecting the phone call, by the way. This is why I think it's so important that men cheat on their wives. This whole ruse of marriage and kids and stuff like this. Listen, guys are supposed to roam the earth banging chicks. Don't you understand? I know. I'm jumping out of a window, too. Yeah, are you with me? Let's hold hands and do it together. Uh, guys, you, we all know the world is spiraling out of control and you need good advices. So you come to me. That's it. Here's the email. You write me. We answer your questions and then... You're, you're free. You, you're like, uh, you're at peace with the world again. I know. Just like, it's that simple. Okay. Thank you. Thank you to all my Patreons. I am very grateful for each and every one of you. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.